करते जय हिंद बिफोर आई गेट टू वाई आई से नमस्ते एंड जय हिंद आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से थैंक यू to ananda ji raghav the ministry of culture all of you for allowing bharat to speak at bharat o vacha so big hand to all of you thank you very very much now namahate that's the break how we break this word namaste namaste means namahate i bow in all humility to the divinity in you that's who i believe because our sanskriti our scriptures our uh, gnanis taught us that all of us are connected by one single aspect that powers us that's this battery that is called the soul and this soul is the jeevatma and if a glass of and science has proven this that if a glass of water has 6 million microbes each of these microbes is alive imagine how many janmas or life forms that small little soul in that microbe has to take to evolve into a human being and eventually get into a body that is of a human being which is the highest evolved living being or jeeva tatva on planet earth at this point so various scriptures sikhism they say 84000 in ours it says millions and millions of births the atma has to move from body to body eventually to evolve at a form and a place where it has the opportunity to ultimately get rid of this materialistic existence and connect or unite with the divine or go back to the source now bit between whether you believe in the dvaita philosophy advaita philosophy what that source is is not the argument but the science behind this spirituality is something that is unique to bharat right isn't this science isn't this deep rooted understanding of every single element of prakriti nature that is including us and its connection with the universe which is defined as the brahmanda or brahmaanda elliptical egg when did the scientists of the west decide this or derive this or even believe that the world is not flat oh it's the earth is round and it revolves around the sun and the sun is just one of the millions of stars in this entire universe which is also elliptical in shape and is forever expanding when did they do it 5 600 years give or take right when did we do it the rigveda talks about it the bhagavad gita you can you and me can fight between 3 to 5000 years ago right we have all this knowledge and this knowledge also defines this bhukhanda as bharata right the vishnu purana chapter 2.3.1 what does it say i'll explain it to you in english it says in the north you have the himalayas from the himalayas to the sindhu that is the south this entire geographical part is called bharatam the people or the vanshaj of bharat live here that is one explanation the other explanation is break bharat what does bha and rath mean bha means the sun that is also implicative of knowledge jnana ratha those who ride in the pursuit of knowledge this is the land that is forever obsessed with knowledge and this is why it is unique in its geography and its identity finds itself not just in culture not just in knowledge but also in its geographical construct a sindhu that means the sindhu river a sindhu that is the mahasagara sindhu means water big water bodies a sindhu the brahmaputra there and the arabian sea indian so surrounded a body a land mass surrounded by water on three sides and the bahubali himalaya on the top on the north which crowns it this is unique to us you all know geography 
can you tell me any other geographical location across the world on planet earth which has this unique geographical distribution it doesn't and what did what has happened in this oldest living civilization that is bharat this oldest living civilization that is bharat has always asked its people to remain connected with each other despite being spread under various kingdoms and various different different riyasats or states why is it that we have 12 jyotirlingas are all the 12 jyotirlingas in the same place no are all the shakti sthalas in the same place is badrinath and padmanabha swami in the same place is dwaraka and nagao in the same place what does that mean or dwaraka and jagannath are they in the same place no but if you have to do a pilgrimage what do you have to do you have to travel all across this bhukhanda irrespective of how many states how many kingdoms how many riyasats it has been divided into in the past or is it or it finds itself broken into today why was this done because ladies and gentlemen in the science in the spirituality and in the philosophy lies the answer that all of us whose ancestors were born here who find our roots in this bhukhanda that is jambu dwipa bharata khanda bharat varsha or how we call it india today we believe in one philosophy irrespective of what faith we follow and that faith and that philosophy was for all the faiths that originated here okay i qualify that that the journey of the atma continues beyond this material body and akashat patitam toyam yatha gachati sagaram sarva devam namaskaram kesavam prati gachati that means it may fall from the sky find various ways rivers rivulets ponds etc eventually goes into one big sagara that means that there is only one eternal sat everything goes and merges emerges from there merges back there and the journey of this atma this battery that powers this body is continuous it is beyond us too this is our civilizational connect this is our cultural reality this is our cultural identity this is our true philosophy and that is why this bhukhanda the people living here the culture that they follow is the culture of bharatam and that is why we should proudly call ourselves louder well said ladies and gentlemen now am i making sense to all of you okay now let me ask you this we started today's session with another very good friend and whom i am a great admirer of and i have read every word of his two books and i'm waiting for the third one who am i talking about what did he say india that is bharat now that is article 1 of the constitution says india that is bharat what does that mean what did our founding fathers write when they said india that is bharat in the times that it was written it was written because everybody called it like india the policy makers the influencers but the founding fathers wanted the core ethos to remain bharat so he said you call it india but it is you call it india but it is today what is the situation there is an india and then there is a bharat whose fault is it should there be an india and a bharat oh this is the india go and see the bharat oh if you are doing something about bharatiya let's start with the sanskrit shloka if it is got to be indian it's got to be in english got to be modern how many divisions why we are conversing in a foreign language but we are so good that we've indianized this foreign language haven't we correct so 
if we have a whole host of knowledge in Samskritam, but you and me, common parlance, don't speak Samskritam, can we not understand that knowledge in the language that we speak and at least follow the essence of that knowledge? Is that possible? How is that possible? When we... I, have, I met a friend of ours who's made it his profession to go and teach people how to read. But do you know, Sanskrit was a coded language. It was never written. Veda or knowledge was passed on orally from guru to the shishya and thereafter generations. And that's why they evolved a knowledge or they devised a language which is so perfectly coded that if you utter it in that particular meter, in that particular tone, after understanding the meaning you repeated, your brain is coded permanently, you'll never forget it. That language is, that is the basis of all modern day machine language. Correct? And what have we done? We have wrapped it, kept it in the puja room and we do puja. That's all. Do we learn it? No. Our grandmothers know it. Our grandfathers know it. Do our parents know it? So if our parents don't know it, then will we know it? Who is going to teach us? We'll have to learn it ourselves. Why? Because unless we learn it, are we going to teach the next generation? No. How are we going to teach the next generation if we don't learn it ourselves? Ask anybody, ask yourself as a child, did you ever do what your parents did? Your parents would tell you, sit there and eat properly. But they are sitting on the couch and eating. What will you do? You will take the plate and sit there right next to them and watch TV and eat. Why? Because they are telling you, you are not sitting, why should I sit? Right? So unless we start this ourselves, we are not going to come to a position where we are so culturally sound and we understand the wealth of our philosophy that we believe in this concept of a nation that is Bharat. We have a problem, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to ask you, I've got about less than eight minutes. I'm going to cover two, three other aspects. But in these eight minutes, you write down while you listen to me, write down five things which is unique to our country. Let me see how much time you take to give me five things. Don't write one word, culture, food. No, sorry, what culture, what food? What do you mean by culture? Give me five unique things that makes you proud of the oldest living civilization in our country. How many of us knew the story of the weavers that Shefali Vaidya just showed us? How many of us knew about it? How many of us have passed through those handloom stores? Not cool for me here, I'll go there. How many of us have done it? Right? And we are talking about a concept of nation. First up, stop this self-loathing. We are conditioned 600 years of being told that we are, we are good for nothing. Everything around us is good for nothing. Whatever we have learned, whatever we know, our knowledge systems is good for nothing. When you think like an Indian, you are a good for nothing. When I say Indian, a Bharatiya, you are good for nothing. If you don't know how to speak English, you are a good for nothing. Ha! You are wearing salwar kameez, good for nothing. Ha! Mundu pen kya? Good for nothing. You know, I'll tell you what. This is how we've been conditioned to think. Junk this. Control all, delete. Seriously. That's where it starts. That's where it starts. Unless you have pride in what is ours, nobody else will have pride in what is ours. I'm, when our Prime Minister goes and addresses the leaders of the world in Hindi, I feel very proud. Not because Hindi is my mother tongue. No, my mother tongue is Tamil. I would like to speak, but I also speak Malayalam, I also speak Hindi, I also speak Marathi, I also speak Bengali, I also speak Gujarati, I also, so for me, for me it is, he is going and expressing himself in the language he is most comfortable expressing his thoughts about his country. I would like all of us to do that. I would like all of us to henceforth go, we understand all languages, sir, but we'd like to express ourselves in the language that belongs to us, where we can express ourselves confidently. 
and that language also brings out my bharatiyata that is what is important the other thing all of us need to do two things okay so i'm going to wind up 5 minutes the next time you have a break you have a vacation you and your kids have the guts to walk to a train station buy a second class third class first class whatever ticket you want get into the train and get down at a station you have not planned and spend 3 days spend 3 days in that city in that area roaming around seeing that place if you can do that at least once every year for the next 5 to 10 years you know what you would have become you know what we would have become tell me tell me bharatiya and you know why the beauty is the beauty about us our people and us this bhukhanda this people be it hyderabad be it any any place in maharashtra any place in tamil nadu any place in kerala any place in up any place in punjab any place in this country any place if you walk up to a home knock their door and say listen can i please get a glass of water they will say please come in we'll give you a glass of water no why is it that it is the same practice all across irrespective of the state irrespective of the tribe irrespective of what caste what creed what community we are here in this country because that is our sanskriti that is our culture and that is bharata this aspect of cultural naturalism nationalism is something we need to remember and we need to go back and revisit please the other thing this is the first thing first request the second request is how many of us are on social media two hands three hands five fingers everything everybody will come on multiple platforms every week post put one post that is not about yourself but it is about bharat with the hashtag bharat be it the sulemani chai that you get or be it the poha that you are eating or be it a beautiful tower or a whole temple whatever it is or some ikat work that you have come across or because shefali ji told you so you are buying and wearing something on national handloom day please do it but don't tag yourself don't tag shefali bhai there tag absolutely these are two three things we need to start doing because this is the first baby step towards finding our roots now we all know a vatavriksha or a banyan tree why do you think the banyan tree lives for so long the banyan tree's existence is so long even on the banks of a flowing river in spate because when the old trunk the original trunk starts aging its roots or its shoots or its branches they dig roots so that tree continues to remain and continues to exist and no matter how much the spate is this banyan tree remains but if i start putting using so much plastic that in the fourth layer of the soil there is only plastic there and these roots can't dig themselves further what will happen the next time there is a flood the entire tree huge tree will get washed away and then what does it become nothing but a log in the river which will go wherever the river takes it and it will do whatever the river makes it do so there are two messages here one 600 years of plastic usage has made our roots weak so we need to stop using that plastic and for our future we need to stop using plastic so this mental plastic that's been put so that we can't dig our roots or we get delinked from our roots we got to eradicate that take it off and the physical plastic we need to stop so that we have a future for our generations so two messages i have try, i have attempted to give let's be the banyan tree that finds its roots let's go back and be proud and let's have five things that we are proud about our culture 
in on our fingertips so that the next time we say namaste and jai hind we say it from here and here not from here and here you get my point namaste jai hind thank you ha <laughs>